Good morning, brothers and sisters, Church of the Living God. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to all of you who have prayed for my wife and I. Thank you for your prayers, your best wishes, and all that you have um, given on to us. We um, just thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And on uh, specifically on to the brother who asked me of um, the mark of the beast, um, I will be getting to your question. I have not ignored you, brother. Um, things have been kind of challenging, so to speak, lately. But um, uh, we love you all so very much, and thank you all. Thank you all so very much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, there are so many of the Church of the Living God, truly saved, born again, brothers and sisters who are going through just unspeakable, unspeakable things. Uh, whether it's suffering in the body, whether attacks, whether uh, whether problems at home, there's a lot that's going on right now um, upon the Church of the Living God, and um, we are praying for so many of you. You know, there are those of you who um, I personally don't have uh, contact with that often, but um, I don't. I want you to remember, for those of you who I do not get the privilege to speak to that often, I want you never to forget that you are never forgotten in our daily prayers every single solitary day. You brothers and sisters, though we may not converse, may uh, though we may not speak often. You are never forgotten. Never forgotten. And uh, brethren, um, do pray for one another. Because the uh, catching away of the body of Christ is coming so quickly. And it isn't a coincidence that the attacks, the persecutions, the sufferings are intensified this close to us being resurrected, redeemed, caught up. And there are those, out, those of you out there who are suffering um, from, like I said, physical ailments and attacks and at home. And there are those of you also who are, for the sake of fellowship, and for the sake of even companionship, are willing to change and or compromise. This is very dangerous. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19. <clears throat> this uh, video is going to be a lot of instruction in righteousness. We're going to be looking in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Okay. Right now. This soon. To the rapture. See? Beg your pardon. To the catching away. Rapture is not in the scriptures. Beg your pardon. But this soon is close to it. We need to remember a few things. So, Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19. Then Job answered and said, How long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? 
These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourself strange to me. Referring to Job's three friends, who at no fault of his own, the Lord allowed Satan to afflict Job. You read that in Job chapters 1 and 2, where Satan was allowed to afflict Job 1, 2, 3, 4, right in succession. And Job shaved his head and rent his mantle and worshipped. Verse 4, And indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. If indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me and plead against me my reproach, know that now know that God hath overthrown me and hath compassed me with his net. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. Tell me something. Brother, sister, have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been so burdened with checking yourself? Am I in sin? Am I being chastened? Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I, I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. Have you ever been there? He hath fenced up my ways that I cannot pass. And he has set darkness in my paths. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from mine head, from my head. He hath destroyed me on every side, and I am gone, and mine hope hath he removed like a tree. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counted me unto him as one of his enemies. And of course, if you were to read in Job chapter 1 and chapter 2, hardly was Job an enemy unto the Lord. Because the Lord said of Job himself, one that eschewed, feareth God and escheweth evil. That was the testimony of the Lord of Job himself. Let's read that again. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counteth me unto him as one of his enemies. His troops come together and raise up their way against me and encamp round about my tabernacle. We're outnumbered, church of the living God, but greater is he that dwelleth within us than he that is in the world. We are outnumbered. But see, we serve the God of Jacob, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who at his second coming is going to do away with the 200 million man army by just speaking. That's your God. That's my God. If you are of the Church of the Living God, those of you that go to these church buildings that are just believe, who dispute calling on the name of the Lord, Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Those of you who uh, follow the likes of Phil Robertson, your God is not the God of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Your God is the God of this world. Not our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Verse 13, he hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry, I'm, 
I got an email this morning that just really you're watching me we are praying for you you know who you are <clears throat> they that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger I am an alien in their sight I called my servant and he gave me no answer I entreated him with my mouth my breath is strange to my wife though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body your breath is strange unto your wife not meaning that you have bad breath or anything no 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 our instruction and in righteousness you are sealed until the day of redemption and the words that you speak based upon the scriptures that come from the scriptures from our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father my breath is strange to my wife though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body yea young children despised me I arose and they spake against me I don't know if any of you have experience with witnessing on to the children of this generation today outside your door and tracting and uh, witnessing it's totally this generation today is glued to their cell phones have, be, have been desensitized almost demoralized almost but their morals are fed to them by the idiot box by propaganda by the Jesuits it is not impossible because with the Lord there is nothing impossible nay 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 but the doors are closing not closed yet all my inward friends abhorred me and they whom I loved are turned against me absolute suffering reveals and absolute suffering reveals absolutely hmm. you want to know the measure of a man that you are or whom you think you are in our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father how deal you with suffering how deal you with affliction Do you point or you as Job hold your place here hold your place see this Job chapter 1 Job chapter 1 verses 21 on to verse 22 look at Job 19 again verse 19 all my inward friends support me and they whom I loved are turned against me are you as Adam as Eve the woman that thou gavest me she did give me of the tree and I did eat are you the serpent beguiled me and I did eat or Job chapter 1 verses 20 on to verse 22 after one two three four things that the Lord allowed Satan to inflict upon Job one two three four verses 13 on to verse 19 after all of that then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and saying naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither the Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God. Foolishly. 
And then look in Job chapter 2, where the Lord uh, says unto Satan that uh, you, um, you had me to allow you to afflict Job without cause, and still he holdeth his integrity, still he standeth fast. And what does Satan say? Verse 4, And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. Take away all this stuff, but yet, about himself, right? Number one? Number one, right? Yeah. Yeah. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went forth Job from the presence of the Lord, and smoked Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then his wife, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What is a fool? You ought to know this by now. Psalm 14, Psalm 53. Check it out. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Go back to Job 19. Rereading verses 13 on to verse 19 again. He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in mine house and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant, and he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth, my breath. The words he speaks, not just, this, not just his breath. My breath is strange to my wife. Though I entreated for the children's sake of my own body. Yea, young children despised me. I arose, and they spake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me, and they whom I loved are turned against me. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh. I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Just barely. Just barely getting by. Hi. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me, O ye my friends. For the hand of God hath touched me. Here's something that you, Church of the Living God, need to understand. There is nothing come upon you that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath not allowed to happen unto you. What are the purposes? I can't tell you. Is it because of something you have done? Are you being chastened? Hmm? I can't tell you that. But nothing goes by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, unnoticed. And nothing happens to you, Church of the Living God, brothers and sisters, without our Lord's knowledge nor consent. <laughs> Just think, what would happen if the Lord did give you everything that you thought you wanted or that you thought you needed? Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hi. Verse 22, why do ye persecute me as God and are not satisfied with my flesh? 
Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. At that time, little did he know, huh? <laughs> that they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. I hope you have not forgotten. Oh no, Brad, I haven't forgotten that, but... No buts. No buts. Okay? And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. If you are alive and remain once the catching away happen, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Though my reins be consumed within me. But ye should say, why persecute we him? Seeing the root of the matter is found in me. He's saying there, why persecute we him? Seeing the root of the matter is found in me. He's saying, you think it was something I did. It's my fault that this happened when we have the testimony and the, uh, what it says here in the earlier chapters of Job, that it was that this was brought upon Job for none of his own fault. Verse 29. Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Be afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Very quickly on that, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 1, on to verse 8. Let every soul, uh, Romans chapter 13, excuse me, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 8. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are, are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. Wilt thou, then, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. What is good? Adhering your life to the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Not your feelings, not the decrees of church building or of the Jesuits or your little clique. No. Right here, the scriptures. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Paul is talking about righteous government. Do we have that here today in my country? What about in yours? Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, 
For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And then when you go back to Job chapter 19 again. <clears throat> Job chapter 19 again. The very last verse, verse 29, be ye afraid of the sword. For wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know that there is a judgment. But what about verses 13 under verse 19? How people just were put away from Job. How everyone seemingly turned against him. And all things were contrary to him. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. <clears throat> The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is, my, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know that. You know that. I know that. Can we hold that in our hearts? When all the cards are stacked against us, this soon, this late in the hour, hmm? can we? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock, lowercase r. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Read that again. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. You need to be very careful about compromising, especially now. You need to be careful about willing to compromise what the Lord hath clearly shewed you in the scriptures in order to be in fellowship or companionship. You need to be very cautious. And if someone is trying to make you deviate from what the Lord hath clearly shewed thee, you need to get away. You need to take heed. Okay? Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. A plain path because of mine enemies. Narrow is the way that leadeth to life. But broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Narrow. Narrow is the way. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies.
for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruel hatred, uh, breathe out cruelty. Excuse me. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. These people who hate our Lord are cruel. And false witnesses rise up, accusing you of things that you do not, and putting things into your lips that you said not, and twisting and conniving and saying, See, see, see. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, the blessed hope. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Everyone about us who is not of the church of the living God is dead in trespasses and sins. To see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Our time is coming, brethren, sisters. The catching away. It's coming. Prepare yourself. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like, like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. It's not up to you to get even. It's not meat for you. Church of the living God, to condescend to the level of those who are attacking you, to those who are persecuting you, to compromise. To make, uh, to appease them that you may have peace. Especially when you are the one who is standing to the standard and they are not. For evildoers shall be cut off. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Oh, this is their hour in the power of darkness. But every single one of you evil, wicked people out there. Live it up. Because you have but a short time. And you are going to reap eternal damnation in hell like a fire. So go ahead and get your shots in. At the end, you'll have nothing. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. <laughs> are we not seeing that today? Are we not seeing that today? Those who are of the church of the living God, who hold to the scriptures, 
Hmm? Are we not seeing that today? The Lord shall laugh at him. For he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Like the attacks that are coming to our beloved brother Aaron. You know you're doing something right there, dearly beloved. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish. You believe that, right? You know that, right? Right? Sometimes it's hard to imagine the way you see it now. But the wicked shall perish. And the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke shall they consume away. This is their hour, the power of darkness. But as their God, Satan, that old devil, Lucifer, they have but a short time. Don't forget that. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. Amen. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Ordered by the Lord. Through the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. And he delighteth in his way. Brethren, sisters, sometimes the only joy that you will have in a day is the time that you spend with our Lord and his word in the scriptures. In prayer. You tell me. Isn't that how it is for some of you? That the only joy you have is when you're on your knees, on your face before our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. When you're in the morning. Gleaning the scriptures with the Lord and he's showing you things. Sometimes. Sometimes the highlight of your day, the joyous part of your day, the treasure of your day, is when you're in the scriptures and or in prayer. You need to be in prayer. Verse 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. You might slip. You might mess up. You might choose to sin. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Oh, you'll be cast down. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? But you will not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen to that. Amen to that. Oh, you might have heard of a lot of people who, were, who claim to be Christians 
and everything falls apart for him. I'm sure you've seen that in one form or another. But those who are of the church of the living God, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. The Lord may allow you to go homeless. The Lord may allow to um, with, withhold from you some daily bread. But his mercy is never clean gone from you. Church of the living God, those of you who are truly saved, born again, sealed unto the day of redemption, don't you ever forget that. Comprende? He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Note the singular there, his seed. Oh, Jesus Christ, God our Father. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. What is evil? Anything that's contrary to the scriptures. What is good? Everything that lines up with the scriptures, especially for us today within the Pauline epistles in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. Guess what? Contrary to mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Rome, Contrary to what she says, you're saved, born again, sealed unto the day of redemption. Guess what? You're a saint. They are preserved forever. You're sealed until the day of redemption. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. All you fakes. Like I said, fill that cup to the full. Suckle yourself until you are fat and happy and can suckle no more. Because the God of this world hath nourished you, you fakes, you false brethren, you infiltrators, you Jesuit scoundrels. You have but a short time. But those of us who are of the Church of the Living God, we will be rejoicing when ye shall be screaming and sorrowing. Hey, you need to consider now all you fakes. Right now, instead of later, when it is too late, when you're in hell. How worth it is it? How much worth is it to you? Hmm? Is it worth it? Is it truly worth it? Most of you fakes, <laughs> all you fakes, by the time you actually sit and consider and ponder these things, it'll be far too late for you. And you're going to get what you deserve. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. What is wisdom? To fear the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Job 28, 28. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. You need to repent. You need to come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. Believe on him on what for what he has done for you on the cross, and call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon him, which is the ultimate shoe 
of your humility unto the Lord when you the lesser calling on the greater because if you dispute that calling on the name of the Lord you're putting yourself on the same level aren't you yeah yeah good luck the law of his God is in his heart none of his steps slide there are those out there well the word of God is in my heart but yet your feet slide constantly because some of you who say that most of you who say that you're not saved yes those of the church of the living God sometimes our feet slide absolutely verse 24 though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again that's in Ecclesiastes go find that verse 32 the wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him Oh, brethren, sisters, we are being watched Ma under a magnifying glass, it seems. Every little mistake, every little stone that we might stumble at, every little tripping of the tongue, these enemies of the Lord magnify that a thousandfold and even when it is speaking purely the Word of God the wicked watch at the righteous and seek it to slay him there are those who will watch you or listen to you because the Lord is in you and he's the one who doeth the works and there are others who who say they are of the Lord but are not they are they are of the God of this world and they seek to slay you to catch you in your words twist and turn the Lord will not leave him in his hand nor condemn him when he is judged your works will be tried for your rewards but you yourself will be saved and I've touched on that on many many times before not going to get into that here we, here we see this again wait on the Lord and keep his way and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off thou shalt see it and we are told to not rejoice when our enemy stumbleth, lest it displease the Lord and his wrath turn away from him. Brother, sister, you really have to be on guard about that. Uh, a fellowship that we had uh, a week or two ago, um, both brothers, two of the brethren, um, brought that up. And that was a cutting rebuke to all of us, myself included, because when those who are against God, when you see them stumble and fall, you you do, don't you? You do. Ha <laughs> ha! You had it coming. Ha <laughs> ha! We have to be careful about that. Praise you, Lord. You are just right and equal. Maybe in this affliction, he or she might actually be broken of themselves and come to you as a broken and contrite sinner and repent of themselves and truly believe on you for what you did for them and ask you to save them. Be careful about that. Seriously, be careful about that. Hello. Because that's what the enemies do. Verse 35. 
I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Why are certain of the brethren's comments being deleted? Why, even though you have notifications on, why are you not being notified of your brother putting up a sermon? Even though you have all the notifications on. Why is it you labor for the Lord, but yet it keeps getting worse and worse and worse? It's not in vain, of course. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Spreading. Make a part. Verse 36. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but I could not, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Your perfection cometh from the Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ that cleanseth away all your sin. And it is his righteousness that is imputed unto you. That's perfection. And you can have a perfect heart toward the Lord. Absolutely. You yourself cannot be sinlessly perfect. I have a video where I address that, so I'm not going to get into it. Okay? But you can have a perfect heart for the Lord. And if you have a perfect heart for the Lord, you would be striving to adhere to this the scriptures by faith and practice and for those of you well our practice really doesn't matter because we're eternally secure those of you who use that as a cop-out argument to um, defend your sin and justify your sin you're lost you're lost. That's all I can say to you. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And, and hey, all you easy believism, Jesuit coadjutors and Jesuit coadjutor wannabes, the works are referring to the works of the law. You twits. You twit. I say that with charity, of course. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help him and deliver him. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7. Come on, fingers, work with me. Micah chapter 7, verses 5 on to verse 13. Sobering words. Instruction in righteousness. But we're going to see other tie-ins, of course. 
Micah 7, verses 5 on to verse 13. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore, therefore, I will look on to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Yes. This is instruction in righteousness. It is not your salvation. Exactly. Exactly, yes. But our salvation comes to catching away the resurrection when we are redeemed. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. See, you, you fakes, you Jesuits, you coadjutors, you devils, you'll, you'll get your little victories here and here and there, sure. No rejoice not against me, O oh mine enemy. Oh, I can just see y'all in your little chats just salivating. Oh, oh. oh. How pathetic. How pathetic. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. She. The mother of harlots and abomination and abominations of all the earth. And shame shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord thy God? Mine eyes shall behold her. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire in the streets. And you can go ahead and uh, check Revelation chapter 18 and 19 with a cross reference for that. Read those chapters in light of that verse. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for their fruit, for the fruit of their doings. Right there, from verses 11 on to verse 13, future prophecy. Time of Jacob's trouble. But instruction in righteousness. <laughs> and of course, Matthew chapter 10, where this is echoed again by God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. For if you do not believe that I am He, you shall die in your sins. If you do not believe that Jesus Christ is God, the Father, Totally and completely God, one God, spirit, soul, and body. You will die in your sins. Oh, oh, just shut up, you fakes. Three divine persons that make one God. You are insane, deceived, deceiving. Uh, who, who can save you but God only? But no, according to you, 
wicked Trinitarians. The one in the middle. Not one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 and verse 39, echoing what we just read. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder the bones and marrow, spirits. I just paraphrased that and butchered it. Uh, as my beloved brother Alexander would say to me, let's not paraphrase. I know, yeah, I know that we do that, but let's not paraphrase. Amen to you, brother Alexander. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am not come to send peace but a sword. And you have these hirelings in these church buildings saying, peace, peace. And there is no peace. Uh, incidentally, if you happen to be watching this and you're going to a church building with the and the, <laughs> the temperature and social... If the Lord hasn't convicted you about that and you're claiming to be a Christian, not of the Church of the Living God, um, go ahead, stay in it. But when suddenly there are certain people that disappear and you're still there and you open up your NIV and want to talk about uh, how good everything is for you, even in all of this, You're going to really have to start living it then, ain't you? For I, verse 35, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own house. Of his own household, excuse me. Enemies out there, yeah, they hurt you. They can cut you pretty deep. But when it's someone that you've had fellowship with, who you thought was one of you, it turned out to be anything but, even contrary, that hurts the most. That hurts the most. Especially when they make it personal. When you are willing to, whoa, okay, you're fake, you're false, to even the blind people, Ray Charles could see it, okay? But bye-bye, but they keep coming. That's truly the spirit of Antichrist. It hurts worse when it's those who are close to you, doesn't it? He that loveth father or mother, I'm sorry, brethren, I forgot to, I usually turn my ringer off when I do this, especially here in my bedroom. I beg your pardon for that. Yeah, you heard my phone ringing. And it wasn't, I saw it wasn't one of you, my brethren, so, okay. Verse 37. I'm sorry about that, forgive me. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that followeth, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. The fool wants to discover his own heart. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You hate this world. 
Do you hate this world? Well, there are good things. No, 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 no. Yes, the beauty of uh, what God has created. Amen. To behold the beauty with uh, your eyes, what the Lord has made. But the little G God of this world is Satan, whom the Lord hath allowed to be so. And this world lieth in darkness and wickedness. And the only one who's going to fix it is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he come back with us, the church of the living God. But until then, <laughs> you need to get saved if you are not. And those of you, church of the living God, take comfort. John chapter 15. We are going over very familiar verses, but man. Recently, all I've been, you know, we've been praying for so many of you, but all I'm hearing is, you know, yes, we are the church of the, God, of the living God. Do praise the Lord. Amen. But one has gone off the face of the earth, apparently. On the flat earth, um, yes, uh, disappeared, incommunicado, problems at home, problems physically, tempted to have keep company with one maybe they should not, an ex hounding them, family is lost, praying for them, unemployed, Suffering. We need to be reminded of these things, brethren. John chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 23. You know this. Have you forgotten? If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word, lowercase w, that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, hello, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also, because the Lord Jesus Christ is the Father. And hold your place here because we're going to look at two verses in John chapter 16, Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Verses 1 under verse 5. Uh, John 15, verses 19, if, the, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. And look up at verse 18, if the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Yeah, there are those out there who are enemies of our Lord who do hate you. And if given the chance, yes, they would kill you if they could. I know that for a fact. I know that there are actually a few of you, if you had the chance to come upon me personally, mano y mano, if I didn't kill you first, you would kill me. Oh, Brad, you would say, uh, you got to understand, brethren, sisters, that some of these people who attack you, 
They would kill you without a heart's beat notice, within the twinkling of the eye. They would kill you if they could, if given the opportunity. And the Lord is not against defending yourself. And if you say to me the Sermon on the Mount, that is for the Millennial Kingdom, not for us today in this dispensation. Okay? But Isaiah 53, verses 1 on to verse 5. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, and we hid as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I'm not talking to the Church of the Living God at this very second. The Jesus Christ that you're worshiping, if you claim to be a Christian, is that angel of light. Is your Jesus a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief? Or is he just your genie in a bottle? Wipe that smile off your face. Verse 4. Surely hath he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And after all that the Lord has done for you on the cross, that doesn't break you. That doesn't give you contrition. What happens when someone gives you something that you didn't earn, that you can't repay? Thank you. I can never, I can never repay you. And I'm speaking personally of myself, not only to our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, but to those of you. I can never repay you. Never. All I can do is what the Lord would have me to do. You don't think you need to call upon his name. Your arrogance outdoes you. John chapter 16, verses 32 and verse 33. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone. I am not alone. Circle, I am. Because the Father is with me. The soul of the Godhead. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. <clears throat> no kidding. But be, ye, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world.
Isaiah, now, go back to Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Pick your pardon, brethren. Isaiah 49. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy on his afflicted. Now, doctrinally and dispensationally, this is for the Jewish people. Our instruction in righteousness, which we desperately need right now. Especially unto all of us, of the church of the living God, that are suffering, who weep. Who weep when we get emails. Who stop everything and join together in prayer. We need this. But Zion said, The Lord hath for forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Like I said, this is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Can a woman forget her sucking child, and she that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. And look at this. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Again, you might, uh, I got to throw this little wabbit trail in here. Uh, you will hear people say that, Jesus, when he was crucified, he was crucified from, uh, through the wrists. I'm sure you've heard that. It's nonsense. He was crucified. The nails went through his hands, not his wrists. This is a wrist. A wrist is different from a hand. Okay? That's one of my little, little pet peeves. Okay? Just had to throw that out there. Let's continue. The children shall make haste. Thy destroyers, and they that made thee waste, shall go forth of thee. Did the Lord forget Job? Did the Lord forget Paul? You think the Lord forgot you? Oh, I know he has some right. I know that. But you need to hear it. Psalm 121. Psalm 121. Brother, sister, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The sun, Ra, the moon god, whatever that is, Dagon maybe? I get that confused. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Today you are eternally secure in this dispensation. You weren't in other dispensations, but today you are. You are guaranteed to go to heaven. If you are truly saved and born again and come to the Lord on his terms, not your own. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. 
from this time forth, even forevermore. Ah, uh, what do you say? What do you think? I think that one could kind of, you can kind of tie that into maybe a reference onto the catching away. Specifically, no, but. Psalm 123. Unto thee lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy upon us. <coughs> have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. I know of people who call themselves Christians and everything is going so great with them. No burden. No affliction, no chastening. My stocks are doing really good. Everything is crumbling, but I'm doing... What about helping out a brother or a sister? I have to pray about it first. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah. Yeah. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Hey, are you at ease? Now, we are at rest in the Lord. Yes, we have ease of that, knowing that when we are absent from the body, we are present with the Lord. Yes, we know that. That is ease unto us of the church of living God. But right now, today, you got it easy. Hmm? Have no burden for the loss. Big part. And all you do is attack and can teach nothing. <laughs> yeah. Psalm 125. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abideth forever. Mount Zion, a mountain. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Reference unto the Jews. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous be put forth their hands unto iniquity. You need to be very very cautious about compromise today. Sister, brother, you're lonely. You don't know what it's like, Brad. Till the Lord gave me a wife. Who do you think you're talking to? Huh? Look at me. If someone is causing you to go against what the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, has clearly shooed you through scripture and in the mouth of at least two or three two or three witnesses 
is making you question this. And when deep down, you know that's not right. But it's still making you to question that because you're lonely. Please be very careful. Because what will you do in the end thereof? Not talking about you losing your salvation. Of course not. Of course not. You're saved, born again of the church of the living God. You are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Companionship. Not, I'm not talking about fellowship. I'm talking about companionship. Is companionship worth that much with someone who is attacking what the Lord hath clearly showed you to start off with? Is it the Lord that's making you rethink things? Or someone who wish, wishes to get with you to perhaps defile you? You think about that. Let's continue. Verse 4, do good unto, do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. Be careful what you ask for. This Lord might give it to you. Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Come on, join us. It ain't that bad. Everybody does it. For their feet run to evil. And make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. Think about that. A bird is easily scared off. In vain a net is spread in the sight of any bird. If you see it, why, why aren't you running away from it? Why are you even considering it? What, is it that bad for you? Is it that bad? That you're willing to compromise? Don't you talk to me about compromise. Don't you even talk to me about it. Don't give me your yeah buts. I've lost a lot of stuff because I wouldn't compromise. What about you? Have you counted the cost? 
Oh, I'm lonely. Oh, I need help. You're barking up the wrong tree there, friend. The Lord will reward you. We're going to look at that. Let's continue. Verse 18. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. And Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 10. You know this. You need to hear it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Sometimes it's easier said than done, isn't it? In all thy ways acknowledge him. Oh, excuse me, that's a mistranslation. It should be in some of thy ways acknowledge him. No. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct, go that way, thy paths. Like with the children of Israel that were going to go into the promised land and the Lord had Moses send those spies to search out the land and they came back and brought upon an evil report of the land. That's in Numbers chapter 13 and 14, I think it is. Okay. They brought up an evil report. And again, the Lord was like, that, that, see there, I'm, I'm directing your path. There it is. Trust me and go get it. You can read that on your own time. I've done a video or two on with that chapter of Numbers, so you can find it, if I can find it even, okay? But, direct your path. You do gotta put legs in it. You just can't sit there and wait for it to rain out of heaven for you. You do have to put legs in these things sometimes, brethren and sisters, you do. Yes, the Lord could miraculously do it for you, yes. But the Lord wants you, not a robot. You have the choice. What do you choose? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. I've heard people, heard about people from these wicked church buildings using this to get a tithe out of you, and tithing is not required for us today. I have a very old video, at least two years old, where uh, I address tithing. Okay, tithing is not a requirement for us today. Okay. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Thy substance, your time, the first fruits of all thine increase. What's the very first verse of Scripture say? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Very first verse in Scripture. In the beginning, God. Honor the Lord with thy substance, yourself, your time, your effort, your heart, everything. All of you. And with the first fruits of all thine increase. In the beginning, God. Of thine increase. Honoring the Lord with your substance. Giving yourself unto him, which is your reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Know ye not that, you, that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? And that ye are not your own, and that you were bought with a price? Now, go to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 
Isaiah 56. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come. Got you away. And my righteousness to be revealed. Uh, very quickly, hold your place and look at verse chapter 57, the very first verse again. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Only a babe or a devil would ever dispute the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. A babe, someone newly saved, or a devil who wants you to go through that time like he or she is. Don't you forget that. Verse 2 in chapter 56. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any, any evil. We don't keep the Sabbath today. If we would have kept reading in Romans chapter 13, you would see that keeping the Sabbath is not a requirement for us today. Okay? We have commandments to keep. If we don't keep them, we're not going to lose our salvation. Okay? Get over yourself. Okay? But to think that we have no commandments to keep as the church of the living God, you're, you're getting a little crazy. Or not saved. Which one is it? <laughs> Verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. Listen to this. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, again, dispensationally, doctrinally, this is not for us, this is instruction in righteousness, of course, which we need right now, and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Hold your place here and go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 7. Oh, one second. Sorry about that. I had to find this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 32 on to verse 33. Um, on to verse 35, excuse me. Verses 32 on to verse 35 in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord. That she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but, that, but for that which is comely, and that ye may attend upon the Lord without distraction. And look at verse 28. 
But and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Nevertheless, nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. <laughs> but I spare you. Marriage is a beautiful thing. But you will have trouble in the flesh. <laughs> and when you go back to Isaiah chapter 56, verse 4, or verse 5, even unto him, unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And you can also reference this with the 144,000 in the book of Revelation. Let's continue. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, Every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Good description of all these false prophets and coadjutors. They are, yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his gain from his own quarter. And what is the gain to these coadjutors? The end justifies the means ad majorium de gloriam, for the greater glory of God. And they're not satisfied with making just one hit piece against you. No, no. Part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. Yeah. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Woe to you that are at ease in this world, that are a friend of this world. Especially right now, compromising. <laughs> and you're going to get that shot, ain't you? You probably already got this flu shot, didn't you? Yeah. Didn't you? Yeah. <sighs> My wife don't got a job because she refused that stuff. But no, no, some of you Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're just doing great, aren't you? Do you weep with those who weep? Do you suffer with your brethren? With your sisters? Second Corinthians chapter six. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Right now in my head, I, I keep uh, I, that uh, that Phil Robinson guy. Um, he, he just irritates me to no end. Church of Christ, water dog. You know, gotta be dunked. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna get off on that guy. That guy's a wicked heretic. Uh, anyway, anyway. Sorry about that. Way of a trail. Second Corinthians chapter six, verses fourteen on to verse eighteen. You know this. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, who you have fellowship with. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 
And what agreement hath the temple of God, which temple ye are, if you are saved and born again, church of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit, dwells within you? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Titus, chapter 1, verses 9 on to verse 16. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for a filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. This witness is true. Therefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. There's an individual who I am thinking of right now in my head who lives in Canada, who's always smiling, constantly attacking people, can't teach nothing, living on easy street. And he is not in need. He's not poor or beggarly. And is teaching things for now for filthy lucre's sake. I know you're going to hear that. Good luck, my friend. At least play that part in your video. Okay? Thank you. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men. Yea, hath God said. That turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Revelation, chapter 2. Now, Revelation, chapter 2, and chapter 3, are talking about bodies of people. Persons, spirits on body, churches, people, not buildings, called out assemblies. But also of the seven churches that our Lord mentions, you can also liken them onto types of people, spirits on body. Okay? There is more than one application to be found within these um, chapters. Yes, it's making reference to specific bodies of people, churches, okay? Not buildings, okay? But, again, these can be likened onto types of people. Let's look at this. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 11 to start. One of two churches... Mention in Revelation 2 and 3, only two out of seven that did not receive a rebuke from the Lord. Interesting. And when you think about it, seven, five are left, 
What about the number five? Seven, two, didn't get a rebuke. I know um, Brother Ben once mentioned to me about the numerology thing. Um, I looked into that, but I will confess unto ye. Uh, the numerology thing, because I loved math so much that I dropped out of school. Uh, the numerology thing really does go above my head. <laughs> I've looked into it a little bit. I know very little of the basics of the numerology. I know of it, but deep detail into it, that, like I said, that's a little, that's a little above my head. So you know. But just wanted to mention that. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 11. And on to the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works, and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Very quickly, Catholics, they don't say they're Jews, but they teach replacement theology. Hence, the Jew is the apple of God's eye. So, Catholics say they are Jews, even though they're not, we're Jewish. No, they don't say that. But they say and believe and teach that the church has replaced the Jew. Oh, that's not what they teach. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Replacement theology is of Roman Catholicism. Get over yourself. But also, the type of person who says, I'm Jewish, but they're not. Not a true Jew. And there are. I did a video on this too. Led about by a Jesuit to do so, who I didn't know at that time was a Jesuit. But um, I did a video uh, about who are the true Jews, okay? But also there again, of the synagogue of Satan, those who are calling themselves Christians, and they are not. This has both a literal and other senses, uh, applications to it. More than just one. Let's continue. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, capital S, saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And let's keep reading verses 12 on to verse 17. And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. Even in the, those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Balak egged the daughters of Moab on to go on to the children of Israel, to mingle themselves with the Moabites. Okay? Take heed to this. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrines, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Holding yourself above, ruling over the laity, like diotrephes or diatrophies. Believe 
or else I will come up, <coughs> excuse me, repent, or else I will come on to thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. And Revelation 3, verses 7 on to verse 13. One of two. One of two that did not receive a rebuke. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Key of David, King of the Jews, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem when he come back at his second coming with us, the church of the living God. <clears throat> I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Who is the door? Lord Jesus Christ is the door. And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell on the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. There are many people attacking you, brother. And you have a little strength physically. But the Lord is your strength. Well done. And let's finish this up. Let's finish this up with a personal, personal favorite of mine. Go to Habakkuk. Go to Habakkuk. Let's 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 end this here. Let's end this here. Habakkuk chapter three. A prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigianoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, rever revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known. In wrath, remember mercy. <coughs> God came from Timan, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Silah. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. He stood and measured the earth, 
He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow, his ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was thine anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the, the sea that thou didst ride upon the horses and thy chariots of salvation? Thy bow was made quite naked. According to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Selah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. And the light of thine arrows, at the light of thine arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst stress the heathen in anger. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even for salvation with thine anointed. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation onto the neck, Selah. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. <laughs> Thou didst walk through the sea with thine horses, through the heap of great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at the voice, at the voice, rottenness entered into my bones, and I trembled in myself, that I might rest in the day of trouble, when he cometh up unto the people. He will invade them with his troops. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hen's feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. To the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Brethren, uh, sisters, pray for one another. Don't give up hope. And stand upon the truth of God's word. No matter what it costs you. Because when you read Isaiah chapter 53, remember what it costs the Lord. And it is your reasonable service. And the Lord will reward you. And pray for those that are afflicted. That are suffering. Physical. Spiritual. Mental. At home. Abroad. Rejoice with those who do rejoice. And weep with those who weep. For we are one body. And if you if you rejoice in the Lord, praise the Lord. If you are going through sorrows, I can rest you assured that there will be at least one and two, my wife, 
who will weep with you, even though we are not there. And like I said to you earlier, there are several of you who I do not get the privilege to speak with often. Please, please, don't ever think that you are forgotten by us. And especially don't think that you are forgotten of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who has engraven you upon the palms of his hands. You know that. But you needed to hear it. And again, um, to the brother who asked me about the um, Mark of the Beast, uh, I will be getting to that, brother. Have a, have a little bit more patience with me. Like I said, this has been a this has been a, a challenging week, but in comparison to those, I I won't even talk. Who is the one to say anything that has dust on his hand in comparison to him in that same hand has a sliver? You know what I'm saying? And also, there are those who want to talk to me about certain things in Scripture. I'll get. I love you. Pray for one another. And may our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord God, our Father, be magnified. Hopefully this has helped some of you. Just that our Lord Jesus Christ be magnified. That's all. We love you, and we're praying for so many of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, God's people said amen. Bye-bye. See you in the next video.